The Tesla Powerwall 3 is the best all-in-one battery storage system on the market, or it was until this new Give Energy hybrid all-in-one was announced. The new Give Energy has a solar inverter which you could say is twice as good as the Tesla one, but the Tesla has far better thermal management and will work more efficiently in colder weather. The Give Energy battery has new technology built into the gateway, such as smart loads and critical load backup. But the Tesla has Stormwatch, VPP, and a far better user experience. So which all-in-one battery is for you? Which of these fancy features do you actually need? In this video, I'm going to compare the two systems directly, and hopefully you'll get a clearer idea of the benefits of each system and what's actually important to you and your house. The new Give Energy All-in-One offers 13.6 kilowatt hours of usable storage capacity, slightly edging out the Tesla Powerwall 3's 13.5 kilowatt hours. While the difference is small, it demonstrates Give Energy's intent to top Tesla's offerings, even if it's by a small margin. Both systems utilize lithium ferrophosphate, known for its safety, durability, and superior performance at low states of charge. So what about charging the battery? Well, the Powerwall 3 can charge at five kilowatts, while the all-in-one can charge at six kilowatts. If you have a larger solar system, then this might come in handy for a few reasons. Firstly, it will enable you to charge your battery 20% faster. There may be times where your solar system generates a lot of electricity for an hour or two, and then not much at other times of the day. For example, with some east-facing solar systems, you can get a lot of generation in the morning for a window of two hours or so, and then the generation quickly drops off as the day goes on. If you have a larger system that can generate more than seven kilowatts, then the Give Energy will have a higher chance of charging up within your peak window of solar generation. Give Energy owners may find that the all-in-one is full when the power wall isn't because of how quickly it can charge. Another thing to point out is how the additional charge rate might help if you get a bad DNO offer. Some people, particularly those out in the countryside, can get bad DNO offers like the nine kilowatt generation with 3.68 kilowatt export that one of my clients got the other day. These countryside houses often tend to have larger roof spaces that can fit a lot of solar on. If you're looking for a solar system with a kilowatt peak which is much higher than the kilowatt rating of your inverter, then there will be less clipping with the all-in-one system than there will be with the Powerwall 3. Both the Powerwall 3 and Give Energy All-in-One have revolutionary hybrid inverters. But which is better? Well, to start with, the Give Energy All-in-One has a 12 kilowatt inverter rating, whereas the Powerwall 3 has an 11.04 kilowatt inverter rating. As I've just discussed, the Give Energy battery can also charge at 6 kilowatts compared to the Tesla, which can charge at 5. The maximum input current that can feed into the Powerwall 3 is 20 kilowatts, under standard test conditions. The new all-in-one is the same and can also handle up to 20 kilowatts. Something to consider is that the inverters in both of the battery systems can be throttled down under a DNO restriction. If your DNO says that you can't install the inverter at full capacity, then either system can be limited. The Tesla can be limited to 3.68 or 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10 kilowatts. The Give Energy, however, can be limited more precisely than this. Your installer will be able to contact Give Energy with the DNO letter and Give Energy can then limit it to precisely what has been allowed. Sometimes you do get more precise offers, for example, 8.6 kilowatts. With the Tesla, you would then have to round down and limit it to 8 kilowatts. However, with Give Energy, you can limit to 8.6, which would allow you to eke out that extra bit of performance from the system. One of the most significant advancements in the new Give Energy All-in-One is its hybrid inverter, which has six MPPTs. This is twice as good as the one in the Powerwall 3, which is limited to only three MPPTs. The American version of the Powerwall 3 does have six. Tesla say they took it down to three to help bring costs down because most people in the UK don't need more than three DC inputs. I'd have to agree with this, a lot of our clients don't need more than three MPPTs. An average semi-detached house has three roof spaces, for example. A lot of our clients don't even need that and only use two DC inputs. We'll then leave one of them spare for future expansion. For most households, three MPPTs will be more than enough. With six MPPTs, however, 
you could tackle a roof like the one on screen now without needing microinverters or optimizers. The minimum input voltage is something to consider if you do have a complicated roof. With both Powerwall 3 and the Give Energy Hybrid all-in-one, the minimum input voltage is 60 volts per MPBT. This means that in UK conditions, you'd really want a minimum of three standard voltage panels on one orientation, like the Ico Neostar 2 or the Neostar 3. If you do have a roof space that can only fit two panels, then you'd want a higher voltage panel like the new REC Alpha RX series. We do get one or two comments about the inverter's efficiency curve, and this is a very technical point that I should address. In general, inverter efficiency is lower when the inverter is operating below 20 to 30% of its rated power output. So for larger inverters, like the Powerwall 3 and All-in-One, there will be some efficiency losses if only installing a small amount of PV. We don't have efficiency curve data for either the Powerwall or the All-in-One. However, I'd expect a drop off of about 5 to 10% efficiency at lower power ratings. This is one benefit to microinverters. You can handle complicated arrays without performance losses as a result of lower minimum input voltage requirements. Something unique to the Give Energy Hybrid All-in-One is that you don't have to have the solar functionality if you don't want it, which will save money for those that aren't getting solar or already have it. As you can see, the head of product development at Give Energy demonstrated this to me and the box with solar MPPTs on it literally sits on top and plugs into the battery on the bottom. If you don't include it, then the electrical connections are covered up by a watertight plate. If you did then decide to get solar in the future, you could purchase the box that goes on top with the MPPTs and just add that onto the system. Let's talk about the gateway. Now this is often described as the brain of the system. Although with Powerwall 3, much of the actual computing power has been moved into the Powerwall 3 itself. With the new all-in-one, Give Energy are also launching Give Gateway 2 to replace the older Give Gateway 1. Both of the gateways can handle a full 100 amp single phase incoming supply and can keep a single phase running in a power cut, which means that for most houses, they'll be able to keep the whole house running. Neither of the systems are certified as a UPS. However, Give Energy say that the backup change over time is a maximum of 20 milliseconds. The Powerwall 3 can take up to 30 seconds. However, in reality, with either system, you're not going to notice most of the power cuts, apart from when the app on your phone notifies you of one. The change over time depends on the type of power cut experienced. A standard open circuit power cut is easy for the gateway to manage, and the transition should be pretty much instantaneous. The Give Gateway 2 does have a few features which make it superior to the Tesla Gateway 2. Firstly, it allows for critical load backup meaning that you can keep really important appliances running for longer in extended power cuts. Let's say there's a power cut and your battery is charged up to 100%. It will then power whatever loads you have wired on the backup side as standard. However, when the charge of the battery gets down to about 20% or whatever you've set it to in the app, the gateway will then stop powering all the backup loads and switch over to only power the critical loads. Another thing that Give Energy have implemented with Gateway 2 is something called smart loads. With smart loads, you can set certain appliances to only run at certain times. Let's say you have an appliance that you only want to draw power off peak. Well, you could ask your installer to wire that into the smart load switch gear and then set it to only draw power in your off peak tariff window. Let's move on to the design and build quality of the two battery systems. Please bear in mind that Carl from Give Energy did stress that what you see on screen now is not the final product. He did mention that it might look a bit different from the one on the wall at Solar and Storage Live. To start with, let me address the elephant in the room, the screen in the middle of the battery. This is one of the first battery systems to have a built-in screen. I'm not aware of any mainstream battery solutions that actually have one, apart from Victron, but that's really in a league of its own. I don't know why battery systems have never really bothered with screens, as I said in our original Give Energy Hybrid video, inverters have always had screens where you can see what they're generating and even change a few of the settings. But with most batteries, you've always had to use some sort of online portal or mobile app. The Give Energy screen will do two things. Firstly, it will allow installers to commission the battery without a strong internet connection, which should be really handy, especially when fitting a battery outside. 
If you're commissioning a battery with a weak internet connection, then you very often have to restart if the connection drops. And this can really add a lot of time to the end of the installation. The other thing that you can do with the screen is monitor the battery. And I think that you can control it through there as well. So that's going to be useful for a few clients, although you'll mostly control it from the online portal and the online app. Moving on to size, I don't have dimensions for the new all-in-one, but Carl did say that it's smaller than the previous generation. It certainly looks more compact, especially without the solar MPPT box on top. The Tesla dimensions are on screen now, along with the dimensions of the original all-in-one. They're a very similar size. An important part of maximizing the financial return from your solar and battery project is getting on the best tariff. And quite a few of the best tariffs are provided by Octopus. There are your standard tariffs, which are accessible by all batteries, like Octopus Flux and Octopus Agile. Then there are Octopus Intelligent tariffs, which are more advanced and able to offer better rates. So in order to maximize the economics, you really want to get on one of these intelligent tariffs. Give Energy were the first battery company to partner with Octopus, so their batteries could access these intelligent tariffs while others couldn't. With Powerwall 3, however, Tesla announced that it will be able to integrate with Octopus Intelligent tariffs so that Powerwall 3 customers can optimize their savings as well. The warranty terms for the new Give Energy All-in-One remain similar to its predecessor, offering 70% retained capacity after 10 years as standard, which is then extendable to 12 years with health checks at years 5, 8 and 10. Tesla Powerwall 3 continues to offer its 10-year warranty with 80% retained capacity after 10 years. Give Energy did hint that the health checks might get relaxed and that if your system is installed properly by a reputable installer, then you may get access to 12 years as standard. So they'll guarantee 70% retained capacity after 12 years. Both systems have an app to monitor and control the system. The Tesla app is the same app that you use if you have an electric car. You get a nice graphic which shows what's being generated by the solar and where that generation is going. You get to see the Powerwall state of charge and if you have a wall connector or a Tesla car, then you'll see those in there as well. When you click on energy, you then see a load of different graphs showing how the system has performed and where the power generated from the solar and battery has been used. It'll show you how grid independent the house is as well as how grid independent your car is as well. There's a lot of data in the app. I won't go through it all now, but if you want to play around with it, then you can download it and click on Demo Powerwall, and this will let you experience the Powerwall without actually having one. The Tesla app provides a live feed from your battery, and you can see what's happening in real time. There are a lot of other features in the app as well, such as Stormwatch and Off-Grid Mode, which I'll come on to later. The Give Energy app isn't quite as flashy, it updates every five minutes with a snapshot of what the solar is generating and what the house is drawing. You're not getting a live feed of the system. If you do have a Give Energy electric vehicle charger or any Give Energy smart plugs, then you can also monitor those from the app as well. In terms of reporting, you do get a similar amount of information to what the Tesla app provides. Either app will give you a good understanding of how the system is performing and where your electricity is being used. Both apps will allow you to set the charge percentage that you want to leave for a power cut. I've not seen how you control the critical loads and smart load switch gear, but I expect that you'll be able to control all of that through the same Give Energy app as well. Give Energy also has an online monitoring portal as well as an open API. If you'd like to write your own program to interface with the battery, then you'll probably find it easier to do so with Give Energy's official API documentation. Tesla doesn't officially support an API as far as I'm aware, but I think a few people have managed to interface with it and control the system through the gateway. Let's talk about some of the features and gimmicks that come with each system. To start with, the Tesla Powerwall has something called Active Thermal Management. This is the same technology that is used in the newer Model 3 and Model Y cars. It will look at your forecasted energy usage, as well as upcoming weather conditions, and then precondition the battery so that it operates as efficiently as possible. This will come in handy in the colder months when batteries tend to become far less efficient. The Tesla shouldn't be subject to the same efficiency drops that other batteries are, 
As far as I know, the Give Energy system doesn't have a thermal management system to help with the colder months. Both batteries have rear and side cable entry. Both the AC output cable and the solar DC strings can go in through the back or the side. The Powerwall 3 has something called Stormwatch. If this is enabled, it'll monitor local weather stations, and if it sees a storm on the horizon, will start charging up in anticipation of a power cut. I don't believe that the Give Energy system has any functionality like this. Both battery systems can be set up to maximise savings or to maximise your on-site consumption of solar. So if your goal is to be more grid independent, then you can do that. If your goal is just to save as much money as possible, then you can take the battery down that route. The main thing that's impacted is when the battery exports. With tariffs like Octopus Flux, you can force export between 4 and 7 p.m to take advantage of higher export rates. But that usually drives your grid independency down because you're exporting more solar generation to the grid instead of using it in the house later on. The Tesla Powerwall can also take the home off grid when not in a power cut. I'm not too sure why you'd want to do this, but you can click go off grid and then run purely from the solar and battery if you like. I'm not sure what happens when the charge level gets too low, I assume that the gateway will then connect back to the grid so you're not left without power. The Powerwall 3 is laser welded up to two feet, which means it's flood resistant according to Tesla. It's IP67, whereas the new all-in-one is only IP65. Both batteries are rated to go outside. However, with the Give Energy, you're probably better off putting it inside as it might struggle a bit in the cold winter, which is when you really need it. Tesla is supposed to be launching Tesla Electric in the UK next year. Part of this will be something called Tesla Virtual Power Plant, where your Powerwall 3 can be used to help support the grid in higher demand periods. Watch our video on Tesla Electric to learn more about that. So what about system expansion? Well, Powerwall 3 is getting DC expansion packs. These are due out next year, and you'll be able to have three expansion units per Powerwall. The units are 13.5 kilowatt hours each, however, they don't have any inverter technology in them, so you don't need to apply for grid permission if you choose to add one on in the future. I expect that you'll be able to get one of these installed for between £1,000 and £1,500 less than a whole new Powerwall 3. Give Energy have hinted that they'll be doing a similar thing with expansion units, but they haven't released any information on this as of yet. I expect that with both systems, you'll be able to add more than enough DC storage on to meet your requirements. One slight annoyance with the Powerwall is that you have to get another 13.5 kilowatt hours. This is a large amount of storage and many houses may need more than 13.5, but less than 27 kilowatt hours of total storage capacity. So finally, what about the price? Well, Powerwall 3 is available from about £7,600 fully installed. This price comes down a bit when you get it fitted alongside a solar system. Tesla were able to sell the Powerwall 3 at only £500 more than the Powerwall 2. I'd expect that Give Energy will do the same. The all-in-one is the direct competitor for Powerwall 3, and I think they'll price it very competitively. The first generation all-in-one was a tad more expensive than Powerwall 2 when it was released. I think it will be a similar story here, Although one key design point that Givenchy have focused on is modularity, and you don't have to pay for a lot of the things if you don't need them. So for example, those that don't need the hybrid inverter won't need to pay for it. And if you don't want the smart load switch gear or the critical loads backup, then you won't need to pay for those as well. It's very promising to see other battery suppliers coming up to Tesla's level. And I think that Givenchy are doing a really great job. The new all-in-one is gonna be a very popular product, and it will be interesting to see if Give Energy change any of the specs between now and the launch next year. If you'd like to get a quote for one when it's released, please see a link on screen now to put your name down. Alternatively, if you'd like a free quote from Spirit Energy for the Powerwall system that's available now, then fill out our form or give us a call and either me or one of my colleagues will assist you. If you'd like for me personally to help with your system, then email me at the address on screen now. Thanks for watching.